different platforms today. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook with my um, software running on the background, and then I'm on my live phone, too. I want to say this. I was um, Zuckerberg on Facebook. Um, I made some comments about Jamie Harrison, about his connection with the Podesta group and how they cheated uh, 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 he, um, hurricane victims out of their money how he was a lobbyist. And I also made some comments about local um, uh, politicians who were running for office and what I thought the, co the community should look out for before you vote. You should look out for these things with the people you vote for. So in making those comments, somebody decided they were going to report me as uh, fake news, if you could believe that. And so I was, I was, uh, Zuck I was Zuckerberg for about two days. And I thank God for my ability by his permission to write because I can filibuster too. And the main thing I was asking them is why? Why are you, why are you cutting me off? Why are you saying that I'm committing uh, 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 fraud when you haven't looked into what I said? You're just listening to what someone else said. So the, the question was why, why, why? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And uh, within two days, I was back allowed back my video privileges but i didn't want to come back on live yet so so i didn't uh now i want to continue i didn't come back on live yet then so but i'm on live right now and i want to thank everyone for tuning in that will tune in or may tune in uh again thank everyone that left my page I know you're going to sneak back around and see what I'm saying because you know that by God's permission, the stuff I say is on point. Uh, you can't really debate it much. You just don't like it. Uh, you can't debate it much, but you just don't like it. So today we're talking part two. I had done a uh, seven things that God hates because it was necessary at the time to do it because uh, all of this fake love and these all these quote unquote church goers who claim to have to be so at peace with God and smiling all the time and bless you and bless your family and all of that. You're sending the wrong idea to people who are struggling in their battle to understand themselves and struggling in their battle to understand God. Now I'm not going to be on long today. I wanted to do a quick session because at nine, I want to see part two of dying to be famous uh, documentary. Uh, and that's where my heart has always been into uh documentaries and photojournalism uh this other stuff with the studios and all that I, I i didn't that wasn't my thing my thing was photojournalism and documentaries and uh but it's difficult to make a living in that when you are local so i wanted to talk first of all today about something called toxic positivity now i mentioned it before for those of you who are um on my facebook page You'll be able to see me showing the visuals. And for those of you who are just on the Facebook Live, you will only be able to hear my voice. So I want to take my time and do this. But there is a term called toxic positivity. And this particular article says toxic positivity, the dark side of positive vibes. When we begin to act like everything is all right all the time, we are actually creating, a, creating an atmosphere uh, that causes more harm than good. So I want to read this real quickly. This is uh, the psych, the psychologygroup.com. It says, we're not negative Nancys. In fact, as author of this post, we strongly believe in the undeniable power of positivity. While there's certain some, some, while it is certainly something to be said for having a sunny disp disposition on life, it is also possible to overdose on sickening sweet nectar of platitudes such as everything is awesome you're so awesome well at least you look at the bright side you might have broke your leg but at least one day you'll be able to walk look at the bright side you lost your child for a reason all of this toxic positivity has a uh, equal and opposite reaction to what we think we are trying to accomplish so i want to go into that first and this is a quote from mark manson it says everything worthwhile in life is won through surmounting the associated negative experiences. Any attempt to escape the negative, to avoid it or quash it or silence it only backfires. The avoidance of suffering is a form of suffering in itself. 
The avoidance of struggle is a form of struggle. The denial of failure is a failure. Hiding what is shameful is in itself a form of shame. So we are dealing with people who are always looking for someone to blame for their troubles. That's why I'm so glad that y'all heroes, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, have apparently won the White House. Because you're not going to have anyone else to blame for anything. It won't be Trump. It'll be Trump for a while because he'll keep tweeting and he'll keep, you know, instigating like Donald Trump does. Just like I tell people, Donald Trump was a gangster in New York in 89, 86, 87, 88, 89. When, we, when I was in New York, Donald Trump was on the same level as John Gotti. He was just a gangster and, and black folks look up to him like a gangster. Like we looked up to Scarface and, and all of them, Al Capone. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't until he got into that uh, You're Fired or whatever that show was on TV and then got into the presidency that most of us started to even notice the man. And most of you liked him when he was on the show. But when he got off the show and became president, he became a problem. So I'm glad that Biden is in office. I'm glad that, that Kamala Harris is in office. So now, who are we going to blame? All right. Signs of toxic positivity before we go into the seven things that God hates. Below are some common expressions and experiences of toxic positivity to help you recognize how it shows up in everyday life. Before I go on with that, I want to put this up real quick. This is my cash app, Johnny Wilson, dollar sign 19 promotions, lowercase promotions. Um, we are um, focusing on getting a uh, conferencing system, focusing on uh, a yearly subscription to a live streaming software. It may be Zoom or it may be, uh, I can't even remember the name of the other one, Free Stream. It may, thank you, son. It may be Free Stream, but we want to go ahead and pay for that for the year and be able to uh, invite guests because the, the Facebook group chat, it just, it's kind of, it's kind of glitchy and we want to be able to, so that we can get people on. We have some people coming out of other states that want to be on the show with us that have, uh, because we wanted to do a uh, domestic violence show, but we weren't able to do it because we couldn't get the people on board. Some people didn't call back. I guess they got cold feet. Uh, it happens. But with with uh, with the donations, we want to do uh, the conference uh, uh, mechanism. It may be a you know like a conference call uh, a phone type thing that we can put a microphone to, and or it depends. But we do want to get the software. I have so many cameras. I really don't want to buy any more cameras. I have four. I have four video cameras and four photo cameras and I don't care what the upgrades to them are. I just, I don't want to get into purchasing stuff anymore and the, and the market is flooded. So we want to go that route. So this is my cash app. You can send money to that. And we of course post up receipts as we did with other events. Now, toxic signs of toxic positivity before we go into the seven things that God hates. This is Jamil Salib Zamir out of Manning, South Carolina, the 19 report. Thanking everybody for tuning in, telling it like it is. Thanking everybody for tuning in again. Uh, Dale Castro Powell, we still tight as all get up, man, like two shoestrings tied together. It's just as for those of you who don't know, his son was murdered on Sunday night, Saturday morning. He didn't find out till Sunday morning. And so when Sunday comes around, we're enthusiastic about moving forward with the show. And sometimes you get depressed because you're thinking about your loss. He and Tanya are uh, thinking about their loss. And sometimes you just can't get it together, man. And, and when you can't get it together, you just can't. And that's just the way it is. But we still, you know, thick on things. We're still working on the, uh, the sign for um, the murder victims of Clarendon County. Um, I unfortunately... People have, we lose interest in things so quickly. And in losing interest in things, we think because we do one part of something, we're done. But we haven't completed the project yet because we haven't gotten the billboard yet. And I promise you with that billboard, it's not an egotistical thing. I believe that that billboard will help to solve some of the crimes that have been committed, that there is no one associated with the crimes. and as Many of the parents and sisters and loved ones have been thanking us for putting their child on the shirt, for having the Manning Lives Matter event. It helped them to heal in a way. And so we're moving forward with that. 
the Community of Concerned Citizens, of course, is a nonprofit organization run by myself, my wife. It is registered with the state of state of South Carolina. So we want to go forward with that if we can with that. So now signs of toxic positivity. Let's look at it. Below are some common expressions and experiences of toxic positivity to help you recognize how it shows up in everyday life. One, hiding or masking your true feelings. That's something that I find people are not able to deal with well. Because when you start to tell truth, people begin to fold. They can't seem to to deal with truth. They, they would rather deal with the idea of their illusionary life than to deal with the truth. And so when you come with truth, people listen to what you say in order to respond without um, examining or doing any research on what you said. They automatically want to attack you because you are taking away, away their idea of... Uh, the illusion that they live in. So hiding, masking your true feelings. Number two, trying to just get on with it by stuffing, dismissing an emotion. So that's what most people tell you. Just get on with it. Lead the past in the past. Move on. That's toxic positivity talk. And I believe that most people don't realize that they're doing it. But in this day and time with technology and all that we have available to us to see, to read, to to meditate over, to listen to, we should automatically understand at this point, if this stuff that we've been advising people to do has not yet changed their lives completely and permanently for the better, then we should re-examine what we've said, re-examine the things that we thought, and try to find a better avenue. That's, that's, that's the great thing about this presidency. I'm grateful that Biden and Harris won because now it's a change of pace. And we'll see just how much change. One thing I'll tell you for sure that I believe is going to change. All of us going to either be mandatorily um, vaccinated with this COVID vaccination or we're going to lose some form of our medical benefits or, or social security benefits or something if we don't comply. I tell you that, I believe that. Number three, signs of toxic positivity. Feeling guilty for feeling what you feel. Feeling guilty for feeling what you feel. Number four, minimizing other people's experiences with a feel-good quota statement. Well, could be worse. Could be worse. Well, at least you ain't this. At least you still got that. And you think you're doing well, but if you haven't gone through it, then you don't know it. This is toxic positivity, causing more harm than good. It sounds familiar because most of us have engaged in it, continuously engage in it. And I get tired of seeing people smiling all the time on their broadcasts. But we love that stuff. We absolutely love it. I, I have, uh, I'm sorry, I have an alarm on my phone to remind me that the show is coming up in 30 minutes. So I have to be done. And my throat is dry. Um, number five, trying to give someone perspective, i.e. it could be worse. Instead of, instead of validating their emotional experiences with me, I'll always tell people I have no idea what you're going through. I absolutely have no idea, but if you want to talk about it, I'm here, I'm here to listen. Number six, shaming or, ch or chastising others for experiencing frustration or anything other than positivity. So that's how people attack me on Facebook. You're negative. You're the things you say are negative. And you're, you're, you're breaking up the community, but the community has never been together. The community is a bunch of liars and a bunch of, of illusionists who think that because we, we hide our feelings, we won't have a problem with what we feel or we won't cause any conflict with what we feel, but eventually it's going to come out. If you're a homosexual, it's going to come out. If you're a murderer, it's going to come out. If you're a molester, it's going to come out. If you're a pedophile, it's going to come out. Eventually, something will bring it out, or at least the thought, the intentions of what you would like to do will be made manifest. So why not just think to yourself, wow, I actually harvest these, these thoughts. Let me try and fix myself. Let me try and see if I can uh, find someone to talk to to help me deal with the emotions that I'm feeling. Number seven, brushing off things that are bothering you with a, it is what it is. Now that is something that we are totally accustomed to doing, that it, it is what it is. But I never liked the term because it is what it is, but it ain't what it has to be. And it ain't what we have to accept as what it is. 
certain things we can change if we put our hearts and minds into it. Now, let's get into this real quick. Proverbs 16, 12. Well, actually. I think I put the wrong thing. Yeah, Proverbs 16, 16 through 19. I put uh, 12 through 19. We could go from 12. Let me see. Let me see if we can go from 12. Uh, yeah, let me. I'm going to open up the uh, entire thing. And then we'll just go from 12 because for some reason I said 12. And if I said 12, there may be a reason behind it. Let's see. In 12 is talking about certain things that God hates, which include it, which adds on. 16 is where it starts with there are six things the Lord hates. But 12 says a troublemaker and a villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth, who winks maliciously with his eye, signaling with his feet and motions with his finger. This is mostly talking about your secret organizations who control the world through their troublemaking, winking, eye winking signals and their feet motions. And 14 says, who plots evil with deceit in his heart. He always stirs up conflict. Therefore, disaster will overtake him in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Now, when God is talking, it says that a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like a day. So when we start talking about what God is going to do and how he's going to do it, we are automatically thinking this is going to happen immediately. But if you read the story of, of Noah, Noah taught for close to 900 years. And in 900 years, he only converted about 80 people to God's knowledge. And in that 900 years, he's building an ark. And I'm not talking about a wooden ark. I'm talking about an ark of a covenant with God to have God's protection from the destruction that was coming. So beware of the toxic, positive people in your life. Everything of this world, from how to win friends and, and influence people, Rich dad, poor dad, all of these things, how to think and grow rich. All of these things influences us to think positive all the time. Now, out of 10 people, three people might be successful with that type of thinking. All of your motivational speakers, it worked for them. It may work for some of you, but it will not work for all of us. That's just not the way it works. So. Let's go into this real quick. 16, 15 says, therefore, disaster will overtake him in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. No answer to it. Now, I, I put in my caption on my live that I'm streaming to different websites. I said um, that. What did I say? I said that. Thinking contrary to what God thinks makes us feel better, and I'm paraphrasing, but it, it doesn't justify our thinking. So the seven things that the six things that God hates and the one thing that he absolutely hates the most. There are six things that the Lord hates. It says in 16 Proverbs uh, 6 and 16 through 19, there are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. One, a haughty eye. Two, a lying tongue. Three, hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked schemes. Feet that are quick to rush into evil. A false witness who pours out lies. And a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Let me say it again. There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. The Lord hates a haughty eye. The Lord hates a lying tongue. The Lord hates hand that sheds innocent blood. The Lord hates a heart that devises wicked schemes. The Lord hates feet that are quick to rush into evil. The Lord hates a false witness who pours out lies. And the Lord hates a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Now, in a nutshell, that's all of us. Absolutely all of us do that. One or the other. But because we are so poisoned by toxicity, we have convinced ourselves that because we're being nice, because we're smiling, 
because we say praise the Lord about everything, because we only post up pictures where we're looking happy and not sick or tired or concerned, that we're doing the right thing. I have a diagram that I have up on my uh, live stream, not on the phone, but on the computer. And that diagram, if I can, I'm hoping I can. Uh, I want, uh, no, I can't zoom into it the way I want to because I can't move it around the way I want to. I wish I could. Um, let me open this up a little bit, see if I can read it better. Yes, I can read it better. Now, I talked about the seven things that God hates, and I'm going to close with this. The seven things that God hates, cracking the biblical code to it. All of these things are part of the human anatomy. The seven things that God hates are part of the human anatomy. The five percent nation, peace to the gods in the earth, peace, king, peace, almighty. The seven things that God hates and the number seven that is utilized by the five percent nation. One in the same, one, two, three, four, five, one in the same. So I'm going to read these things, and then we're going to close. Said so the seven things that God hates, it speaks of false witnesses who lie. That goes on in the brain. Then it talks about an, a haughty eye, which is the eye. Then it talks about a lying tongue. Then it talks about hearts that, that divides wicked schemes. In the heart. Then it talks about hands that shed innocent blood. Then it talks about persons who stirs up conflict in the community. That is the sexual region from the penis or vagina to the abdomen area. Because anytime you get excited or angry, either you want to urinate, you get an erection, or something goes on in the private area. Persons who stir up conflict in the community we get excited about that some people love to kill some people love to get over some you see a lot of people when trouble come first thing they do is they grab their private part it's this this great uh elation of doing dirt of destroying the community more so than building the community and feet that rush into evil now this is not just talking about street people this is talking about politicians, preachers, laymen, blue collar, white collar, red, white, brown, yellow, gay, straight, lesbian, dyke, whatever you want to be called, LGBTQ. Everybody's sinning. Everybody's sinning. These are the things that God hates. So in hating these things, once we hate what God hates, even if we are part of those things, even if we fell in love with doing those things because we hate the fact that we love these things, mercy comes to us from the creator. But when we begin to justify these things, then we are falling into the clutches of a satanic thought, satanic mind, satanic activity. And once Satan catches a hold of you, catches a hold of me, it is almost impossible for us to get free. So you see in the biblical scripture where Jesus says, get thee behind me. Where in the book of Job, God recognizes Satan. Satan makes a deal with God to take control of the people. And that is where we're going to close off at because the next commentary we do will be Satan watching over us, pertaining to our time in, in the Garden of Eden uh, and uh, all the trials that went on and how Satan was allowed to be placed ahead of these things, how God made Pharaoh hard. And he said it in the book. I'm going to make his heart hard because I want to kill him. I want to make him an example for the people. How all of these things come about and why they are so important in this day and time. We got to be ready because family and household at any time. So I thank everybody for tuning in. This is Jamil Salib Zamir out of Manning, South Carolina, the 19 Report, the seven things that God hates, and a brief uh, synopsis of toxic positivity and why we must begin to be more honest with ourselves and others of our fears, of our doubts, of our hopes, of our dreams, and stop lying so much. This is Jamil Salib Zamir, and I want to leave this on the back end. I told you all before, 
I'm not your traditional speaker or preacher because I do have a foul mouth at times. Rather, I'm in private or rather I'm on the Internet. I'm going to say damn sometimes, hell sometimes, ass sometimes. Uh, you've seen me with a cigar because I maybe once a year I will smoke, a, uh, take two or three puffs off a cigar. You may see me with a little Hennessy and a little glass, but mostly red wine. Because for those of you who know me, I don't hide my, my health issues. You know I have a lot of health issues. Uh, I have been diagnosed with H ultra, uh, um, articular fibrillation, so I do drink a little red wine and uh, at, at least once a day or at night or something like that. So you may see me with that, but that's about it. I don't hide anything because it's not necessary to hide it. It's going to come out in the wash anyway. This is Jamil Salibs, Amir Manning, South Carolina. Thank you all for tuning in again. Thank you for donating to us at Johnny Wilson, Dollar Sign 19 Promotions. We are trying to get the conference call, uh, the conference uh, 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 phone. We are trying to get a year prescri uh, subscription to either Zoom or, I can, gee whiz, I keep forgetting it. My son just told me the name of it. Um, but we're trying to do that. Uh, of course, we have receipts and everything else. Thank you all for tuning in. This is Jamil Salibs, Amir Manning, South Carolina. And look up some of the information and share it, too. I may be on private, but I'm going to make it public very soon. Thank you all for tuning in to this installment. We are gone.